What's up, everybody? This is Jamie Bedingfield. You are listening to Too Many Words, my podcast, a place for the creative and the slightly odd. If you're more than slightly odd, it's all good. I would say I'm definitely more than just slightly odd. I have an awesome episode for you all today. And if I do say so myself, and I do, so it works. Feel confident. Entertainment is upon you. Um, Different format today than usual. Instead of one guest, I have two. I have Rebecca Weimer of Why Mermaids, a book channel on YouTube, and actress Kate Hackett on after that. Both awesome women, very cool, great talking to them, and both contributors of web entertainment. So stay tuned for both of those conversations. They're coming up soon. Very cool. How's it going, guys? What's up? Summer is halfway over, more so, depending on where you are. I know uh, if you have kiddos, depending where you are, you're getting ready for school to start, which is nuts. My kids don't go back until September 7th, so we've got about another month here, a little bit less than. And uh, I am back from my first week off in over a year. And I was nervous about taking the week off. I was skeptical I would be able to leave everything. But I organized myself, put myself together, and made time. I had uh, my sister-in-law, who, you know, we've decided to drop the in-law, that we're just sisters. And our uh, um, my nephew came in from Jersey. And, uh, which is, you know, it's where my husband and I are from different parts of Jersey. I'm from Northern New Jersey and, uh, he's from South Jersey, both very different places. If you're familiar with Jersey, you know that, but, uh, it was just, it was great having them here and just unwinding with families, quality time, adventuring, lots of wine and lots of food, lots of laughs. And uh, I did not realize how badly I needed the time off until I took it. And even like the first two days, it was it was hard for me to completely leave it, especially because I saw and I can't get into details yet, although next week I will be able to get into more details. But I saw this one thing and I couldn't ignore it. And then I was, um, you know, in my room with the door closed. <laughs> I was messaging uh, Rebecca Clark, who I'm co-writing something with. Again, more details, but I'm like, this doesn't count as work, but check this out. And uh, But that was pretty much it. And then once I got into the time off thing, I was like, oh, Jamie, nice to meet you again. It's amazing when I'm not so focused on the next thing or this project or this character's downfall, I can actually tune into myself and I'm not so bad. Some me time, some family time. And uh, now I'm back in the swing of things. I'm glad I took the time off because the next few months for me are totally bonkers, crazy bananas. And I'm really excited. I've, uh, you know, I'm doing it. And uh, it's not uh, always glamorous, but I've cast enough out nets out there and I am just up to my eyeballs and projects and I couldn't be happier. I love writing. I need to write. I have huge unrealistic dreams that I hold on to, that I will make them reality. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, things are really gearing up. And, you know, I've got updates out of the wazoo for you guys coming as soon as I can drop certain things. But I will say one of my short stories, Journey to a New Home, working title, that may change. I'll let you know if it does, but it is going to be included in Magic Unveiled, which is a magical realism anthology. And that will be out mid-fall. So I'm super excited about that. I'm about to get uh, sending stuff off for that this week. And uh, I'm really excited to see my story alongside. There's just a whole bunch of really talented authors involved in it. H.M. Jones is one of them. So definitely check that out when it comes out. And of course, I'll be talking to you about it. And, uh, but exercise, it's important. You always hear that. I hear that. And you know, when my kids were younger, my, my lifestyle was much more active. And now that I'm working full time, it's less so. And I'm sitting a lot. 
and I'm possibly drinking more than I should. But I decided, you know what? Exercise, got to incorporate it. Healthy body, healthy mind. So I started that. I'm uh, running and doing yoga. And the yoga, I love it. It's so relaxing. Um, I tend to be naturally flexible, so I just kind of lean into that. The running and the weightlifting and the bicycling I'm doing, less so. I, I'm i exhausted. And I, you know, you're supposed to you feel good, and I think that happens eventually. But right now, I'm just tired. I exercised this morning, and I'm just like, ugh. Now I have to do other things, and I just want to go to sleep after eating a plate of spaghetti. But no, getting fit. You know, and I'm dropping all this money on tattoos. I figure, why don't I define the arms? And I have a tattoo appointment on Friday, and I couldn't be any more exciting. I have uh, Alice, uh, not Alice in Wonderland, though she's going to be much more tattered and tortured looking than the Disney version, falling down my arm and dropping a bottle with a whale in it, um, which is a nod to Moby Dick. And this is a great, this is part of my literary sleeve that I've been working on, so I'm super excited. A little concerned about needing to wear short, uh, long sleeves in the blistering heat, though I'm in Seattle, so blistering heat really isn't a thing. But watch, I get, I'm gonna cover my forearm in ink, and then we're gonna have, like, a really rare stretch of 100 degree weather. Watch. It's gonna happen. Mark my words. Anyway, uh, reading-wise, 100,000 worlds by Bob Prohl. I'm almost done with it. And uh, it's so good. I love the way the story is coming together and the way it was put together. And you should definitely check that out. It's a, it's a really interesting journey through um, the whole Comic-Con scene and what it's like to create and past nagging at you. And it's also a really fantastic story about a mother and son. So Definitely, none of those things were spoilery. I don't want to get an email. Go check it out. It's a great book. And the only reason why I'm reading it slow at all is because I'm also doing a lot of research for projects. And I've been reading about um, the fall of the Roman Empire. And I've been reading a lot about the Sasquatch. And yes, for those two things are for the same project. Things are getting weird, folks. And uh, I have seven different main projects right now and I'm jumping back and forth and there are moments where I'm like Jamie what are you doing it's great I love it and I couldn't be having any more fun and it's great because when I lose focus or motivation in one area but it's still I can just jump onto something else so keeping you know you just got to keep grinding keep working at it being self-aware helps we all have things that we need to work on and you know right now I am kicking the passive sentences ass. Quick and punchy, people. Keep it quick and punchy. But let's go to my talk with Rebecca Weimer from Why Mermaids. Uh, super fun. Love talking about books and we get into it. Here is, uh, let's do it. Let's go to the talk. Hey, Rebecca. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to it. I've been list- I've been uh, watching your channel for for some time now. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, what kind? What led you to starting uh, Why Mer- Why Mermaids? Uh, well, I don't know. I started kind of watching YouTube videos more regularly about a year and a half ago, or somehow something like that. And then I don't remember exactly the process or like the steps, but I discovered I stumbled upon like people making book videos. I think it was Christina Horner. It might've been my first one, like my first book video. And I was like, people do this. They make videos about books. I could do this. Uh, so I, I'd always kind of wanted to start a channel because I used, I majored in film and like we talked about it back in like 2006. We're like, we're going to start YouTube channels. And none of us ever did. And so this was my way to do it. That's really cool. No, I uh, I discovered the the booktubing world about two years ago, one and a half years ago as well, and it kind of blew my mind because I was like, "Wow, this is really cool." It would, yeah, it's very cool. I definitely I wish that like when I was you know lost in books as an awkward child, the the booktubing culture existed then. I know I probably would have read more like in high school if I'd known other people who read. Well, it's it's. 
it's interesting because it's like uh, it's such a deep culture, and there's so many um, different you know um, book related vlogs out there. It's really neat. Yeah, there's like it, it, the main focus from what I've seen is that there's a lot of YA, but it's not only YA. Like if you you just have to kind of find the bigger ones or the people who aren't. But anything that you like to read, you can find on BookTube. Yeah, but it is you, you're you're right there as far as it is YA dominant. But in general, that genre is I would say a dominant genre. I mean, it's it's not by any stretch of the imagination limited to just you know young adult. Everybody reads them. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's such a, it's really blown up in the last probably 10 years or so, the genre itself. And then, I mean, if you have to think about too, the platform of YouTube, the people who are watching YouTube and making YouTube videos are predominantly younger and they fit into that YA genre, but you're right. Everybody reads it. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also changed so much. I mean, you know, uh, the, the subject matters that are covered now just weren't, you know, 15 years ago. No, they really weren't. Um, there's definitely well, and uh, the Sarah Dessen is like a pretty like the main author that pops in my mind as a YA author that has crossed that threshold. I mean, her early books were very you know mild, and then as the you know the subject matters got more and more intense, her writing got darker, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um. So what um, what books have you read recently that you're just totally uh, thrilled about? Oh, man. Um, this year has been, like, such a rough year for me in reading. Um, I think, like, the, the books that have really stood out with me this year are The Limitary Chronicles. Um, and then, like, a lot of, like, sequels and trilogies. And, like, I love the Red Rising trilogy. It's, like, my number one talked about series on my channel. Yes. And the third book just came out. And so, like, I'm still raving about that. And it came out in, like, March or February or something. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Recently, I just finished the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I read all of them in, like, the last month. And before that was the Raven Cycle. So I've been kind of doing this binge reading of series lately. Yeah, I got myself in a little bit of trouble over the holidays because every book that I put on my on my wish list was the first in like <laughs> series. So like yeah. I got like the first like seven of different series, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm 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 in over my head. Yeah, I think I, last year I still there's probably about ten series that I started and didn't finish yet. So <laughs> I don't know why I keep starting new ones. Well, some of them, I mean, it's. Series are tough because it, it really, I think, is like the second book. And if I'm not completely bought in by that, I'll tend to wander. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, go for you for reading to the second. I used to stop after the first. I'm like, oh, but this shiny, pretty one over here, new characters, new stories. Yeah. Well, I've been doing, so I, uh, I was jumping back and forth between uh, the Raven Cycle series the, mm -hmm. the Shatter Me series and then the um, Fifth Wave books. Okay. Um, which was, that was pretty intense. But yeah, The Raven Cycle, um, I love I love those books. Did you finish it yet? I did. Yeah. Did you? I did, yeah. It was, it was I, like, I think I read them all so quickly that I missed a lot of things. So I need to go back and reread them. But I didn't like the first one last year when I read it. And then I read the the final three and I was like oh my gosh this got so much better but the first one was tough for me because I didn't know what was going on for the first hundred pages yeah um, I just didn't like the paranormal aspect of it yeah well I got in I gotta say like after the like there was a point around like page 120 when I was like wow this just got really cool and then actually the second book I kind of um I had and for whatever reason, I don't know, because I love I love Rodin, but I uh, I had a little bit of trouble just kind of sticking with that one. But I had other series kind of going on as well. Um, mm -hmm. But the series as a whole, I really like. Yeah, I like the second one better, I think, because I liked the whole thing that was going on with Ronin more than I liked the thing with Gansey in the first one. Yeah. Well, but overall, I thought they really they came together so well and like the. The parallels and the things from the first book that are mirrored in the fourth one, I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. The, the, four sh the way she sets up the plot is just a thing of beauty. It really is. I feel like she has to, you know, she either, out, 
she has to either be a heavy outliner or the she goes back and really makes sure that stuff is on on point because there's like little breadcrumbs in the first book like you said and then yeah the fourth you're reading the fourth book and it's all coming together and it's like wow (laughs) tons of respect yeah, it's like reading Harry Potter. Because, like, mm-hmm. when you go back and read Harry Potter, you're like, oh, my God. Uh-huh. She said it in the first book. Mm-hmm. And you're just, like, the little, like, the red, like the breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a really good example. Yeah. She's amazing. Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a moment of silence to just appreciate her awesomeness. Bow but- down. <laughs> uh, so, and what's a deal breaker for you as far as, like, you re- a subject matter or a certain thing when you even while you're reading it where you're like, oh, this. Do you have one? Um, I have a hard time putting down books, but I I had a, I struggled with the book You by Carolyn Kepnes earlier this year just because it was. I liked the idea. I don't know if you read it. Yeah, I did read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. So it's cool because I like it because it's sold in second person. But I had a hard time getting through the like sexual graphic scenes I was like ah this is a little much for me in that context I think I just couldn't handle it (laughs) yeah well there there was a lot of um a lot of interesting things there was different aspects about the book but I think it had just I had trouble with it just all coming together for me yeah I liked I liked how it made me think but I just that was kind of my issue I felt like squeamish as I was reading it, and I don't think I enjoyed that that much. So that's kind yeah. of one of the more deal breakers for me. That and it's just like if it's so incredibly offensive that I can't handle it. Those are really the only reason that I'll put down a book. Yeah, that's fair. I can see that. And on the other side of that, what's like you, you hear certain genre or um, you know premise where you're like, oh, that's just totally my jam dystopian and fantasy like if it has a comparison and I hate comparisons to books because it's it's so overdone especially with the ones <laughs> I'm going to say but when they say it I'm like well I do, I do want to read it so if they say like Hunger Games or Game of Thrones or Harry Potter I'm like I'm done I'm here ready give it to me now <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no uh po- post-apocalyptic I'm such a sucker for I oh yeah I just I love the chance to see like different realities i love it that's one of my favorites as well i don't like real world stuff that's just boring (laughs) i want to see the world changed and messed up and like how people have coped with that well i mean i think it's it's super interesting too i mean especially when you know it's done well you're you're able to take in all the real world stuff and the personal struggle struggles and you know um and, you know, issues in government and all of it, but in the fantasy or the dystopian, the post-apocalyptic genres, yeah. you're, you're just able to get it at a different angle where it's just, it's removed enough, but it's also at the mm-hmm. same time, you're able to relate to it, I feel like almost in a different way because of what it's masked in, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like Animal Farm, you yeah. know, is, is a really great example. Or even again, I all things go back to Harry Potter. It's, you know, it's so many, it's such a mirror image of like, you know, what has happened in culture and look at Trump is Voldemort. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <of> yes. <laughs> well, that, exactly. Like when you, when you, um, you know, pick up a dystopian book, like let's go to um, Hunger Games, you know, you've got okay. President Snow. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just, that's, totally something that you know we can take in modern day society and just relate to it because of you know you've got this you know this guy running the ship and shit's just backwards <laughs> you yeah. know it's that kind of i love that kind of those parallel parallels absolutely especially as an english teacher those are just like my favorites <laughs> <laughs> you so yeah you're an english teacher you that's it i uh you must be an awesome English teacher. Well, actually, like, I'm kind of lying when I say English teacher. I used to teach English, but now I just teach journalism. And I, like, I miss English because I got to talk about books. So that's part of why I went to BookTube is because I just don't get to talk about books at work anymore. And so they, I just do it online. <laughs> I, I don't teach. I teach writing. I don't teach reading anymore. And I'm like, I miss it. 
Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, uh, I can still point back to, um, you know, my English teacher in middle school and he was talking about, um, what ifs and that was, that kind of spurred me as far as like my writing career. Cause I was just like, yes, the what if that's, you know, that's how you get your plot. And it just like, I mm -hmm. ran wild with it. Yeah, I love, I mean, I love it. I, I love teaching writing and I love teaching journalism and creative writing, but I do miss teaching reading because then that's when you get to read the fun books and talk about them. Well, I mean, that's it. Like anytime I finish a book and I don't know somebody that's read it, you know, I'm constantly like, I'll tell people and this show is great for it too. Cause I get a lot of people reading the books that I talk about. Um, but YouTube's great like that too, because it's just like you read a book and you experience this stuff. You want to talk about it with somebody that's mm -hmm. also read it. Yeah. Now, do you like uh, contemporary at all, or do you prefer more of the fantasy realms? I prefer fantasy, but I will read contemporary when, like, I need a break, or if I'm just kind of, like, in a fluffy type of mood. Like, I just read uh, In Real Life. I forget who it's by. Um, I think it's a, it was a debut novel. Which, I don't know. It came out this year, and it's about this, like, girl and boy who talk online, and they live, like, one's in... Orange County and one's in Vegas and they like want to meet up it's it was like 300 pages super short but it was like kind of what I needed to get me out of this like really long series draining thing <laughs> where I just it would take so long to read and then this I read in like a couple hours and it was great so I'll, I like contemporaries for that but I don't usually gravitate toward them okay yeah well I mean I like the fantasy you know fantasies and that's like like we we're saying those genres I will pick up books purely because of the genre but um you know certain contemporaries i mean i love and i i i that's you know kind of my wheelhouse as far as what i write but um the meaningful heart-wrenching ones are my favorite like i just okay. i recently um read all the bright places by jennifer neven i've been meaning to read that one for a while but i haven't yet that was just oh, incredible i highly recommend it but it is, um, it's a heavy book. And I carried that, the weight of the book around with me for, for a little while. <laughs> it was one of those. And you were like, yeah. what was yeah, that? that was, um, uh, forgive me, Leonard Peacock. Stuck oh, with me for a long time. Yes, that was, yeah. Yeah, that was totally one of those books that like, I would have, I read it weeks ago. And I'm still like, it's still popping up in my mind. Mm -hmm. so like as far as like contemporary like that's what I look for I look for something like Fault in Our Star something that's going to stick with me like the emotion more of the emotional aspect of life rather than like the lighter side of things yeah I gotcha I like the darkness oh <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh so what do you have anything on your list next as far as like ones you want to your books you're going to next um, oh man, I don't even know. I just went to this like new store that just opened up. It hasn't even opened yet. It's like on its soft opening week. The grand opening is Saturday. And it's like all things nerdy. I think it's uh Second and Charles is the name of the store. Oh cute. And I just I just bought like seven books or something crazy. So I I bought like the um his the golden compass, I forget the name of like the actual trilogy, but his Dark Materials, that's what it was. And I've been okay. meaning to read that one for a while. So I kind of want to pick that up. And then I want to pick up This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. That is on I my list as well. Next. I was going to start it next, but I read, I heard that it's got a slower pace. And again, I needed something quick to get me out of my like slumpage. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, did you read any of the Fifth Wave books? No, I didn't actually. I wanted to. I just, there's so many books. I know, I know. Um, well, and I've mentioned this, um, on previous episodes, but I always think of the, I want the superpower where I can just put my hands over the book and absorb either all the information or the story, like within seconds. But then you're like missing out on the joy of the reading though. Well, there is that, but I mean, there, it would definitely, you have, to, there are some weeks, don't you wish that you could get like eight books in? I just wish that I had more time. I think is what I, I wish that there was like infinite amount of time in like a day. So I could read all the books. There you go. But I guess, you know, I don't know. Then I would just, the age, aging would be really weird. I guess there's infinite time. <laughs> yeah. Things would get a little probably complicated there, but 
Maybe I just don't have a job, you know, that'd be great. Just let me not have to work and just read all day. Well, yeah, and then, like, as far as, like, the world pause button while you read is also dangerous. I would misuse that. I would, too. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I need quiet. Pause. Yeah. Be great. It it would. Yeah, I took a moment there. I'm like, oh, that would would really be nice. Well, uh, Rebecca, can you uh, tell people where they can find you on on YouTube and other internet places so they can uh, (laughs) watch the show? Um, so you can find me, my YouTube channel name is Why Mermaids, W-H-Y-M-E-R-M-A-I-D-S, like mermaids that swim with tails. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so if you search on YouTube for the channel name, it will space them out. So you have to kind of click the one that says, no, I want them together. And then that's how you get to my channel. I have 200 and something videos. So have fun <laughs> with those. <laughs> Just pick and choose, I guess. And then I'm also on Twitter. It's the same handle. And Instagram and like everything you could possibly find me on. But those are the three main ones that I use. Nice. Well, thanks so much for coming on and talking to me about books. <laughs> thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And that was Rebecca Weimer. Go to YouTube, subscribe to Why Mermaids, reach out to her, reach out to me at Too Many Words Pod on either Twitter and Facebook, and let me know what you're reading, what you're going to read any book related stuff and if you have any thoughts about the books we talked about that's a great place to to chime in on the conversation as well to stay consistent um i'm gonna you know do my question answering so uh and also if you haven't if you don't know how to reach out to the show you like i said you can do it at too many words pod uh, that twitter and the facebook page you can also email me at jamie the scribbler at outlook.com and uh the questions so i know i said every episode two questions this first one technically counts as more than one question but and i don't like the saying but hitting two birds with one stone i love multitasking and there's been a lot of questions about elliot granger and the clueless brigade going off um itunes and all the podcast listening places and um so and i've I've mentioned this but I uh, I stopped doing weekly episodes of Elliot Granger because Elliot Granger belongs in a book. In order for her story to be fully adapted into a book, she needs to be out of this. She needs to be isolated. I need to take her in closer to me, and we need to work on stuff. And uh, I got a couple of questions about you know wondering if things were going to change as far as names. I can't speak to that. Sometimes things get changed for good reason. Um, but as far as the story, it will still be the, you know, the lost girl dealing with grief, you know, from the loss of her mom with turquoise hair and her dysfunctional, crazy friends that you just got to love, even though you wish that she'd hang out with other people. So the heart of what makes Elliot Granger, Elliot Granger will still remain, so I'm working on that, and uh, as soon as I have on uh, updates about release dates and Elliot's new home finalized, you guys will be the first to know. So yes, I grouped in a lot of questions there. I apologize if this upsets anybody. You know, we do what we got to do. And now my next question is just one question, so I- I'm not going to get crazy with both. Uh, but uh, this is from. I'm going to read it to you. This is from Tara. Hi, Jamie. I've been pursuing my writing career for years now, and I heard about your podcast originally from a friend, and I listen to you every week. I love to hear about your ups and downs, and it's comforting to hear you talk about all that you're doing in a very delirious way. I've been really discouraged about all the rejections I've been getting for both my long and my short projects, and my boyfriend says I should throw it in the towel. I'm really upset. It's been my dream for as long as I can remember. I'm wondering if he's right. Doubt seems to be getting the best of me. I'm interested in what you think. Hope you read this one, Tara. All right, Tara. I did not always have the support that I do now, and I I am currently very supported in my writing career, and I thank every day for that because it makes it so much easier. But for years, I wasn't. I had no support, only discouragement, and I will tell you this. Don't listen to the non-believers and that might be that you know that might sound silly but you got to believe in yourself and you know if not being supported 
supported sucks. But this is a good exercise. And now, you know, your boyfriend, tell him I said to stop saying that kind of shit to you. To support you. It is hard. Building a rewriting career is hard. And it takes a really long time. And part of that is hearing a lot of rejections. Now, there's always room to go and look at your work critically. See where you can, you know, better your writing. We all have to do it. I do it. It needs to be done. But if it's your dream and it's what you want, you go for it. And, you know, there are, there's going to be plenty of people along the way discouraging you. There's going to be plenty of rejections. But if it's what you want, turn off the negative noise. Keep your pen moving and believe in yourself. Because, uh, you know, you have to believe in yourself. And you love it. Keep working at it. And you'll get it. And uh, for anybody else, I, I, I say it too as well. If you're not getting support, don't let it bring you down. Keep creating. Keep following your dreams. Following your dreams takes courage. It takes a certain level of insanity and a lot of passion, a lot of discipline. But it's very important. I think too often happiness is something that it's like, oh, well, I don't, you know, let's just shove that aside. No. If you need to better your situation, if you need to bring more cheer in your life, figure out how to do it because it's it's important. It really is. Enjoying life. We got to we got to do it. We got to enjoy life the best that we can. We got to keep plugging away. And uh all right. So um we're going to go to my talk with Kate Hackett. I had so much fun talking to her. I I will st- I will say this. So while I was recording my chat with Kate, my my one dog Jake, the Rottweiler, the uh, love of my life, or one of them, <laughs> uh, he was upstairs ferociously barking through the entire conversation. And so my across the street neighbor allows their dog to run all over the street unsupervised. I live in a very busy area. It's not like we're in a, you know, tree fortress. This is city living. There's no speed limits are enforced. And uh, this dog is just allowed to run the neighborhood when her owners are doing whatever else they're doing. And she really likes my yard because my yard smells like three different dogs. And now pocket gophers because I have pocket gophers building a kingdom under my front yard. This is true. Every day there's another mound of dirt popping up from my grass. Anyway, this dog, the neighborhood dog that runs wild, was on my yard and the kitchen window was open. And my Jake was uh, letting her know how he felt about her being on the yard. But I was downstairs recording. I could not stop the situation and I couldn't yell at my neighbors. Now he was barking so loud and I was I was I was able to quiet it down, make it less present, but I couldn't completely get rid of it without distorting our voices. And I'm surprised by this. Perhaps if you guys have any advice, you know your audio stuff, reach out, tell me how I can avoid this in the future because I'm sure that while I'm talking to somebody at some point the dog will again be in my yard with the kitchen window open and Jake saying, get out of, get off of my yard. Go across the street. Stop eating Jamie's lavender plant, which is epically large. But yes, so Jake is present in my talk with Kate, but it is, it is not show stealing. It's just in the background and we even talk about it. So it's, it's kind of funny. It's Jake making his contribution to Too Many Words. So shout out to my dog, Jake. And uh, uh, thanks to Kate for being patient where, while, uh, while he threw an epic fit about his territory. So without any, uh, without any further ado, let's go to my talk with Kate Hackett. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I uh, originally found out about um, Classic Alice. I was doing research for uh, a show with Heather Mason, and mm. she had written an article 
about Classic Alice on TV Sisters, and I started watching the show, and I was just like, oh, this is awesome. I have to get her on. (laughs) No, I definitely relate to Alice, so. Uh, You know, me too. Um, That, like, you know she was such a dork in, like, elementary and middle school, that kind of girl, and uh, I I loved playing her. It was, it's over now, like, you know, we have the benefit of some distance and time, and it was just really fun to inhabit this character who was so close to me but still like very different I'm, I'm doing that currently with a novel that I'm writing and the character there's similarities there but it's also definitely not me but at the same time as you know it's kind of therapeutic to kind of deal oh. with myself through someone else <laughs> yeah and you get to see like oh I did that or I behaved that way and I grew out of it or like oh no I still do that and it, it, it's definitely um therapeutic and I, uh, so I recently just wa- finished watching um, the last episode. What made you guys end it and move on to different things? Oh, it was just over. Like, it did, um, it came to kind of a natural close. Like, it felt like it was time. Um, you, nobody, especially actors, nobody wants to get kind of stuck in one thing. Um, we yeah. want to go out and see what else is out there. Um, and web is tough. Web, web is hard to maintain cost wise we funded ourselves on kickstarter and then on indiegogo and after a while you know your your network is tapped and it's hard to keep asking them for money and it's they don't understand why you need it again and so it's just sort of like okay that's done (laughs) totally i've wondered about kickstarter i haven't done a kickstarter campaign but i've considered it for multiple projects and it it seems like it it can be challenging thing to be very challenging it's just it's a lot of work it's a lot of you pushing every day all the time and you can't stop and it's it's a significant like it's a job uh by itself it's a full-time job and when it goes well it's awesome and when it doesn't go so well it's like oh why am i doing this definitely well self-promotion and and all of that it's like you have to put a significant amount of time in it you have to pay attention to that world all itself it's a whole nother section of of creating that's intense it is and i actually i don't know if you know about patreon um but i'm i started on that i don't remember how long ago but i started doing patreon and that's kind of nice because it's smaller more contained but it's ongoing um it's spelled p-a-t-r-e-o-n people can help you monthly instead of like a big dump for this one thing um and that's been fun too to also connect with people that i might not be able to have like one-on-one conversations with it's a nice way to be like great you really like what i'm putting out so like i know that you're here let's have a chat that is cool. No, yeah. I've, I've seen I've seen the link various places, but I haven't um, really looked into it. I think I, it sounds interesting. I really like it. I think it fosters some community while also being a nice way, a nice easy way for fans to both contribute and to just like stay in touch. That's really cool. Well, I yeah. mean, internet and social media and all that has changed careers so much but at the same time there's all these outlets but it's also there's so much noise and sometimes it can be really difficult to find you know your target audience in all of it yeah absolutely like being in so many places it's all the time is like "Ah." (laughs) yep and then you juggle that with your you know the projects and it's a very disorienting reality what are you working on right now are you got your hands in anything yeah right now um I, so if you watch the show, you know, Chris O'Brien, he was the bad guy. He was Ewan McBay. Mm-hmm. Um, he and I teamed up again and did a, like kind of a weird, it started as just a couple of sketches, but we strung them together into a um, more coherent narrative. So it's like a whole story. And it's these two characters who have the same birthday and they have their birthday parties on the same day every year. And their friends like, don't know what to do with that. So they decide to have a joint party (laughs) and everything goes wrong. It's the stupidest idea they've ever had. Um, So it was a lot of fun to shoot because it was just like my friends and there was no gathering of money and there was no like, (laughs) it was classic Alice became, I mean, for me, very big. Like obviously it's not a 700 person set or anything, but it was big. It was like 80 people that I had to manage. And this was like, 
Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it was much more relaxed. Well, yeah. Wow. Managing 80 people. I can't even manage myself. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and uh, so how did you get started with Classic Alice anyway? Um, uh, okay. So I was asked by uh, a friend and his business partner to, they wanted to make a like pro reading channel on YouTube. And I was like, that sounds awesome. And they said, we would love for you to, to do something, to write something and host something that bridges the gap between like, if you like Twilight, you're going to like this classic novel. So kids or teens know, you know, what else is out there other than contemporary vampire literature. (laughs) And and, uh, and I was like, that sounds interesting, but I'm an actor and I really want to make sure that I have a narrative, like a story and I'm not just hosting. And they were like, what do you mean? And I said, well, what if, and then I pitched the show and they said, oh, like the Lizzie Bennet diaries. And I was like, no, yes. Um, but there was not, instead of the characters actually being the characters in the book, like with Lizzie Bennett, it's Pride and Prejudice. It's just that story. Ours was going to be a conscious effort of a character who had her own story going on as well. So um, it was a little bit different, but the same kind of format. And then they wound up not going forward with their their channel idea, and I just took it and made it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's just so interesting because you've got, you know, you go through the process of creating something and then there's the whole pitching it thing. And it's like, it's, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm shopping a novel right now and I'm starting to consider other options because it's like, I want to get it out there. So it's like, at some point I need. <laughs> That's kind of the cool thing about like, there are other options. You can self-publish, you can, you know, post it on YouTube. It's, it might not get you the same prestige or readership or viewership or whatever as a traditional movie in a theater might but you could just do it Mm -hmm. and there's nothing really in your way anymore and that's neat it is well and sometimes just knowing that you have extra like at least for me like knowing i have extra options it helps me be a little bit more patient too true that (laughs) the the uh the illusion of options (laughs) <laughs> and being able to call home and be like, hey, I wrote a book and like maybe it'll be published. <laughs> it's, yep. a lot more, it's a lot better than like, hey, I, I wrote a book. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, yes. <laughs> well, especially, I mean, it's like, and I'll say that too. Like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a writer. What do you write? I write books. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything else that, that you've got going on that you're working on that you're aiming um, for? I think that's the, the big thing right now. I'm... Right now on the channel, I've I've started putting out Kate and Joe just want to have sex. It's a different show, completely different, obviously, and that's uh, another like comedy kind of almost little vignettes of stupidity. <laughs> yeah, I was watching that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Thank you. No, your uh, no, your your writing and your your style. It is super fun and super enjoyable. Thank you. Um. And then, so clearly, I'm assuming that from what I've seen, that you're a big book fan. I am. Have you read anything recently that you're crazy about? Oh gosh, I actually, yeah, I read Friday Night Lights. Have you? Do you remember the TV show or the movie? Um, yeah, I watched the I watched the TV show like it was my job. So okay, I'm watching the TV show right now, and season four is amazing. It, it made maybe like one misstep in season four. But um, I wanted to read the book, too, and my boyfriend had it, and so I picked it up. And it was phenomenal. I was so into it. It was about um, it was about just, like, the socioeconomic differences between the different sides of the town and how important football is for these kids to feel like they can get out. And then the complete lack of support after football ends. Like, these children go from superstars to nothing. Yeah, and, uh, and the writing was so good. It was really, really good. I sent it to my dad for Father's Day, and he was like, "Why did you read this?" Because I'm not—I <laughs> don't know anything. Like, football's not my jam. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I haven't read it in a while, but yeah, no, it's uh, from what I remember, pretty fantastically put together. Mm-hmm. Sorry, no, my, my dog was barking, so I didn't know if it cut oh, off. Your, your dog was barking, and then my washing machine started. Oh. <laughs> It's a big dog. Yeah, it's a Rottweiler. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a um, 
a border collie Australian Shepherd mutt that we got from like a rescue. Oh wow! She's a puppy, so she's extra cute, and that, and probably extra handful, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um. She is she a good puppy? Yeah. Oh my god, she is a really good dog. Like she listens, she follows you around. She's great. Um. But she definitely like you have to play with her. She you have to give her an outside activity, which is tough when it's a hundred and three degrees. Oh so. man! You know, poor thing. Well, yeah, no, uh, we just got some. We're, I'm in Seattle, and, like, we're just starting to get summer weather now. It was, like, 72 today. That sounds lovely. Uh, well, you know, for the most part it is, but when I'm ready for, like, summer mode and the kids are home from school, but it's rainy outside, it's kind of, like, uh, <laughs> Sure. Um, so is there any, like, how long have you been pursuing your writing? Well, writing is less. I'm right so, out of necessity. Okay. Uh, I, I'm an actor. Like I moved out here to be an actor and nothing was happening and nothing was happening and nothing was happening. So I was like, Oh man, forget it. And I started writing and then I started shooting just with friends and we did some sketches and we did just kind of like baby steps, you know, like, Oh, I, I know how to do this. I know how to do this on a small scale. Maybe I can do it on a bigger scale. And things got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then classic Alice happened and uh and then from there you know I'm trying I'm trying to kind of like let's roll back a little bit yeah Uh, but uh I enjoy writing my boyfriend is actually a writer and he's much better at it than I am um so but I enjoy doing it because it's nice to be like here's a thing I made I did it I can be proactive with my career now I don't have to sit and wait on someone else totally well, so so just, that's been like maybe three years now that I've been kind of like, all right, I'll, I'll just write it if no one else is going to do it. That's awesome. Thanks. I mean, and like we, what you said earlier, the fact that we can do that now, it's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's, I know it also affords me like, I know now what a producer goes through again on a much smaller scale, but I, I know how many people are asking questions. I know that what the director is thinking. Like I, I have all of these roles kind of like, all right, I've been there and I know how a writer feels if an actor changes the line and you're like, no, no. <laughs> so I can bring that experience to set with me. So even if like everything was a failure, I still have this experience that I think is really helpful because I know what it's like to have done all of those jobs. Totally. Well, I mean, experience alone, it's like, you know, with projects that I'm working on, like, like I said, I had a series going with a publisher and the publisher closed its doors down. Now, those books in the form that they were in aren't going to come back, but they've kind of spurred this whole other project that I'm really excited about. So it's like, even no work is really wasted because it, it can lead you to something else. Yeah, I, I love the idea of celebrating your failures. Like, <laughs> and even if there, I mean, at some point you're like, well, that wasn't a failure. But I mean, just celebrating when things go wrong because things will always go wrong. And you, it just by na- by the nature of existing, like doing a thing, whatever it is, you're already ahead of somebody else who didn't do that thing. So it, even if it doesn't work, if it collapses in on itself, you still did something. Oh, definitely. So that's well, my disgusting positive moment for, for today. <laughs> well, it's important. I mean, because it's really, I mean, it's frustrating to try to carve out a space for yourself. I mean, oh, absolutely. Some days, and then, like, depending on how the day goes, like, I'll be like, just feeling awesome. It's like, okay, <laughs> there's all these leads. I did all yeah. this. I'm feeling great. And then the very next day, I could just, you know, I want to, you know, bang my head against the wall. Yep. I know that feeling. I think that's uh, an artist feeling. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to not be discouraged when you when you hear like no thanks. Yeah. So many times. See, it's hard not to be discouraged when you don't even know if what you're doing is like. I don't know. Maybe writing's different, but we don't. We really don't get feedback. Like no. you go into an audition, and unless you were really awful, they probably don't say anything. So you could either be booking it and then you know you're great or not booking it and you have no idea if you were great. They just wanted a different ethnicity or they want like whatever. 
So it's very nebulous, our job. And that lack of feedback is almost worse, I think, than hearing like, no, you were terrible. Definitely. No, it's very similar. It's very rare that I hear back from a query oh. with, with why they passed. Usually it's a, unfortunately, no thanks, basically. Oh, we don't even get a, we don't even get an unfortunately, no thanks. We just don't hear back, which is, uh, I told some friends from back home like that and they were just flabbergasted because when they go for job interviews, they get an email back or something. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> what? That is crazy. Because I mean, at least for me, like I wouldn't be able to like, especially if it's something that I was really looking forward to and I didn't hear a no or a yes, it's hard to like also like let go of that. It and, is. Oh, it is. It, and learning how to just be like, great, I did my audition, I'm done, is really tough, especially if you love the role, if you love the part and, and you go in and you want to like kill it and then <laughs> they never speak to you again. <laughs> and you're like, why? Yeah. No, well, and it doesn't, I mean – it's very easy too, at least like for me, like my inner critic doesn't need a lot of encouragement to get loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, today for me actually is one of those better days where I'm like, oh, I'm on top of it. Oh, good. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, I, and again, tell me the, the, your newest uh, Kate and Joe just want to have sex is the one that's out now. The one that will be out in the fall, I think just got a name. I, uh, I had, speaking of Patreon, I had my patrons vote on a name because I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and they picked, what did you pick? What did you pick? I believe it was not a plan is the, going to be the name of it. Oh, nice. Yes, that is what it is. Not a plan. No, that's super, super fun and uh, convenient to when you can't make your decision. I know. It's great. <laughs> like, hey, free labor. Yeah. So, uh, my friend and I recently um, just announced that we're co-writing an anthology together. And cool. we were coming up with an image for, you know, the company that we're going to put it out under. We're just going to do it, this one ourselves. And uh, we made a bunch of images and had different people, you know, vote on which one we were going to go with. I like it. Um, so, Kate, can you tell everybody where they can find out about you and Twitter and all that good stuff? Sure. So uh, my Twitter is twitter.com slash hackitkate. Uh, then my YouTube is just youtube.com slash Kate Hackett. Uh, two T's, H-A-C-K-E-T-T. -T. And then, let's see, Facebook, I think it's actress Kate Hackett. So my job Kate Hackett and then Patreon is the patreon.com slash Kate Hackett so awesome nice, nice and easy yeah <laughs> and if you just like google Kate Hackett or go to katehackett.com you will tumble onto it yeah it's true your your name brings up a lot of a lot of accurate <laughs> links <laughs> oh. hey, other Kates <laughs> Oh, it's weird. Like, I Googled myself. I mean, I, I'll admit it. I Googled myself. And there was other Jamie Beddingfields with the same Y. Left, huh. You know, my name's kind of an unusual name for spelling, and there it was. There is actually another Kate Hackett who lives in the same part of L.A. as I do. With She's also in the film industry. She's a director and I think a writer. And I was like, why aren't we working together all the time? <laughs> Really, it, we we battle each other for like domain names. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you can even yeah, you could use the uh, the double name in like your marketing strategies as well. It would be the most confusing movie of all time. <laughs> you nice. wouldn't know who is. Oh, it would be great. <laughs> no, that sounds like something you need to make happen. I know. <laughs> I, I got to figure out how to. She's actually, I've like seen her stuff too, and I think it's really good. So. <laughs> Did you um, always live in LA or did you move out there? No, I was, I, I grew up in Maryland okay. and then I went to college in Boston and my dad's family is New Jersey, New York. So we're Yankee fans. And then I moved here. Nice. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm from Northern New Jersey. So yeah, I, I, oh, I, I grew up okay. wearing a Yankees hat myself. <laughs> yeah. My, my dad's from uh, Bergen County. Okay. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's small world. 
Yeah, and then I, I, I fleed to Seattle the first chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's a uh, can we say this the town? I think it's fine, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, he grew up in Palisades Park. Oh, okay. I used to go to Palisades Park. They had a giant, crazy shopping mall. I yes. I grew up in um, Westwood, right outside of Paramus. Yeah. Paramus, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's so funny. Yeah, I was like five minutes outside of Paramus, so that's like my I was a mm-hmm. ma- I was a mall rat. It's funny that the there are certain words you like. Even I do it just because his family's from there. Like you say these words, like Paramus is one of them. You can hear the <laughs> accent just floating in there. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, it's funny too because like um you know we. M- once we had kids, we were already in Seattle. They had never been to New Jersey and my daughter's growing up and she was learning to talk and she was saying things like Mira and draw, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the draw. It's like, oh, you sound like you're from Jersey and you're not, you little cutie. <laughs> the draw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Kate, for coming on. This was a lot of fun. No problem. Thank you so much for getting in touch and setting it up. Oh, definitely. Well, that pretty much wraps it up right now, for now, tonight, tomorrow, whenever it it is that you are listening, we are winding down here. If you haven't watched Classic Alice, definitely go check that out and go follow Kate Hackett and watch her stuff because it's, it's funny and it's awesome and it's heartwarming and all at the same time and uh, she rocks. So if you all... If you haven't, if you don't watch her yet, go do it. And, uh, you know, the deal. My own plugs. Follow me at Twitter, at me, Bettingfield. Follow the show at Twitter, at Too Many Words Pod. The same handle for the Facebook page. Visit, say hi. Give me some likes. Uh, go visit the show at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Let me know what you think. Reviews are always helpful. Sponsors like to see them, and I'm I'm courting some, so definitely leave a review. I appreciate your time. You can go to my site and find all my good stuff at jamiebeddingfield.com, links to my blog, and uh, you can find my, my uh, real and raw and vulnerable pieces on Feminine Collective. You can go visit there. And... Um, Yes, and stay tuned because I have a lot of exciting things to share with you. So uh, that wraps it up. Thanks for listening, everybody. Until next time.